Hello everyone and welcome back to another Kerbal Space Program video. This week we will finally be revisiting my mini-series Destination Juna, a series of missions in which we colonise and explore the Red Planet. And you know, it has been a while, hasn't it? The last instalment was two months ago. How time flies, hey? Anyway, this is a slightly less uh, standard KSP video and that we're not starting in the Vehicle Assembly Building or the Space Plane Hangar, but instead are starting out here in low Duna orbit at the Duna base camp, right where the last episode left off. For those that don't recall last episode, we completed the space station that lies before your very eyes, with the addition of that enormous long boy interplanetary transport vessel that you can see docked perpendicularly to the station, and we also installed these two surface-to-space nuclear aircraft as well to the station's docking bay, and it will be these space planes that will well, actually, just one of them, to be precise, <laughs> that will be the focus of today's episode. I am currently transferring some Kerbals into the space plane, because you see, we didn't just add the space planes and interplanetary transport vessel to the station last episode. We also added what is perhaps the most important component of any exploratory mission, and that is the Kerbals themselves. You see, in this series so far, the space station, the Juno surface base, and indeed the mobile laboratory have been derelict habitats with no crew to occupy them. Obviously, this is no longer the case for our Duna space station here, but it unfortunately remains true for both the surface colony and the rover. Until today, that is. We will be taking a crack team of six Kerbals down through the atmosphere of Duna, all the way to the surface colony, being sure that we have enough Delta V left in the space plane to get them back up to the space station should they complete their mission, or, you know, have to make some sort of unplanned evacuation of the surface base. Now, this isn't a single stage, to Duna surface. You may notice it has a small liquid fuel drop tank on board. That's just to make sure that we use as little fuel as possible from the spacecraft itself during our initial deceleration burn. Just because I know that the internal fuel capacity of this space plane is adequate enough that we can just do the deceleration burn and then the Duna ascent and not run out of fuel. But I didn't know if we'd run into any mishaps or need to deal with ourselves in quite an expensive way, like we had to do a big tilt adjustments to our orbit, so I wanted to make doubly sure that we definitely had enough, hence why we've got that drop tank there. But I digress, that was a summary of where our story left off and where it will begin this episode. And yes, you know, today's Kerbal Space Program video isn't necessarily quite as exciting or eventful as my more usual uploads, but I still wanted to make the descent down to the surface colony a separate video for a few reasons, you know. Chiefly, I think that it's quite an interesting thing to watch. <laughs> I've made videos of Duna space planes before, but I usually play the footage back, uh, at least the footage of the descent back uh, and landing, very, very quickly. I rarely showcase me landing in a predetermined location as well. Normally, I just deorbit myself and land wherever I happen to end up, which, of course, would not be ideal for this particular mission. So this is a good opportunity to show you how I land Juna space planes at a precise location, particularly as flight on Juna is quite difficult due to the slightness of its atmosphere. Aircraft have a pretty nasty tendency to nosedive when their speed gets too low. You can't just land as easily as you can on places like Eve, Kerbin or Leith. The second reason I'm making this a standalone video is because... Mm, I like all of my KSP videos to have some sort of focus. For example, my last upload was me constructing and flying a Hyper Ring SSTO that I built, a nice contained mission. And last episode in Destination Juna, I designed a space station expansion vessel, which we then launched, flew to the Juna space station, and then conducted said space station extension. Nice contained episode again. But now I have to get the crew from the station down to the surface base. So my dilemma is, do I just make that its own episode, or do I attach it to the beginning or the end of another Destination Juna episode in which we build something else to launch from Kerb into Juna to complement the series in some other way? But I feel like if I were to just randomly stick this at the beginning or at the end of a longer length episode, it would just be a bit jarring, and it would definitely compromise the pace of the video, especially if I put it at the beginning of the episode. Like, people would click on a video expecting to see a particular thing, but then they wouldn't get to see that particular thing right away, thus confusing them, angering them, enraging them, depressing them, arousing them? Hmm. Any of those, really. And I don't want that. There is also a third reason that this flight uh, is its own contained video, and <sighs> to be honest, this is probably the biggest reason. 
I actually filmed this flight not long after I completed the space station expansion mission. That's why it's KSP version 1.9, not the version we're on now, which I believe is 1.9.1, I think. But yes, since filming it, it's been pretty much just lying dormant on my hard drive ever since. Uh, I've not really been sure what to do with the footage for reasons I've just discussed, so I decided to just let it sit for a rainy day and use it to slap a KSP video together should a time ever come where I wasn't able to make a new KSP video that week for whatever reason due to real life spinning its web of twisted struggles with each day we live on this lonely planet slowly spinning its way to damnation and I've lost my train of thought but regardless regardless this week was such a week I haven't had any real time to even think about Kerbal Space Program, much less take the time to design and execute a mission, film said mission, and edit the footage into a presentable video on demand for you all to enjoy. I won't bore you with sob stories of my day-to-day -day life, but to summarise in an advertiser-friendly manner, I, as a patient-facing clinician working for the UK's National Health Service, have been undergoing increasing stress at work for reasons that I don't really think need elaborating on too much further than we're all currently in a very weird time in our history, and for me this has meant that my work life has shifted rather radically from what it once was. So as a consequence of that, I haven't had all that much time to make Kerbal Space Program videos. Uh, that's another reason why this is its own video. As you can see, we've now finished the descent and I didn't really talk too much about it to be honest because I feel like a lot of it does the talking for me. It's just nice to show you guys in a slightly closer to real time presentation so you can kind of get a sense of exactly the kind of pace to be aiming for on Duna descent. But you can see I kind of lowered my trajectory from orbit so that our orbital line was pretty much landing directly on top of the surface base we wanted to land on. That's not really a good idea for most planets, but because Duna has an atmosphere, we can do some gliding to make up for that lost horizontal speed that we'll end up losing. Uh, so that was the first step I took. The second step you might have seen right at the end, just before we touched down, I first of all deployed our drogue chutes to slow ourselves down, because if I didn't, our touchdown speed would have been about 150 meters per second, which is too fast for Juno. You'll just explode on touchdown. So the drogue chutes help slow us down quite significantly, but then this leads to a second problem, which is that once we start slowing down too much, the nose will start dipping far too quickly, because again, Juno has a very, very thin atmosphere. Those front canards, whilst perfectly adequate for providing lift at low speeds on Kerbin or anywhere else with an atmosphere, they just don't provide enough lift on Juno. Hence why we've got those monopropellant engines at the front of the craft. They provide the, uh, the pitching up control the uh, aerodynamic control services can't provide. Monopropellant engines, I would say, are almost an essential item to have on a Juna space plane. It's not essential. I have made Juna space planes that don't have parachutes or monopropellant engines, but my goodness, it's so much easier. Like, it's unbelievably easier to land craft with monopropellant engines. I'm saying monopropellant engines, you could also use Werner engines as well, but be mindful that they use oxidizer as well as liquid fuel, so they would not be a good fit for this particular space plane because it has no oxidizer reserves. And, you know, the actual space plane cockpit and indeed the little inline docking port, they've got monopropellant tanks built into them, so I already had a fuel reserve there. I know I've got oxidizer tanks on this thing as well, but they're drained of oxidizer, and this doesn't really serve the point I'm trying to make, so I'm not going to talk about it too much longer. That's it there. And obviously right before we touched it down, I have deployed the bigger parachutes to further boost our deceleration to make sure we definitely slow down. Because once you touch down on Juno, you then want to slow down very, very quickly. Because Juno's surface is not very uh, runway-like. So you want to slow down as quickly as possible before you start encountering rough terrain and the ship starts tilting and you end up losing a wing or some other disastrous thing. So that's another thing to bear in mind with the parachutes. And I think that was all the things I wanted to mention about the actual descent itself, aside from you just showing you guys the process on which I made the descent and you can sort of figure things out for yourself, I hope, like, I think the best way of learning to play this game is just by figuring things out yourself. I mean, I certainly didn't look at any tutorials uh, myself when I learned how to land things on Juno. I just went ahead and did it. But now I have some, I've learned some things, made some mistakes. I can show you what I consider to be a fairly well-optimized landing. I don't know. Anyway, that's that's the crux of this video all done. But here you can see uh, our last one of our Kerbals has packed all of the parachutes back up off the space plane. Now we just need to go and get the last straggler into the surface base. And what a surface base. Look at it brimming with life. The lights are on. The communitrons are all deployed. Things are all ready to go. It is kitted out with all of the fancy bells and whistles that any self-respecting surface base should have. And as you can see, that gigantic mobile laboratory exploration rover, that 
probably didn't need quite so many adjectives. But then again, such a large and over-engineered vessel necessitates a large and needlessly elongated introduction that is standing majestically next to the surface base. Now we have the three components. We have the surface to space launcher. We have the surface base itself. And we have the mobile laboratory to do further afield experiments should we deplete everything we can do in our immediate vicinity. But that's it. That's the end of the episode. Like I say, fairly short, fairly... Oh, it was short. Oh, God, it's just over 10 minutes. Now I just look like some sleazeball YouTuber that artificially makes videos 10 minutes long. I promise I didn't intend it to be this... Whatever. Yeah, whatever. There's some links on screen. <laughs> I'll just stop talking. Left-hand side is the full Destination Judah playlist. Right-hand side is my roasting new upload. Blah, blah, blah. Goodbye.